What's up, scrub scribers? Dave Nader 1, 2, and 2, and let's fix another archetype. Today, we're going to be doing harpies. Yes! Yeah, I can't wait because this is actually an archetype I like. So, I actually I, I played this extensively during the uh, like mid XC era when it was actually viable, which was just crazy. I came back in the game and I was like, what decks are good? And I was like, wait, harpies are a rogue deck? That's freaking sweet! So I built it. I really like it. It abuses the back row. It swarms the field. Um, it feels very much like you are my Valentine kicking scrubs butts. Hmm. So you finally came, Yugi. Oh, yes. Not only that, but like, they're just top tier waifu material. I like harpies. I wish they were better. So, uh, why don't we make some cards? The last wave of support for Harpies was rather lackluster. Uh, they got a Link Monster, which doesn't do a hell of a lot, although that artwork, though. <laughs> as well as uh, Perfumer and Oracle with a, then there was like a Spells and Traps and, and a bunch of hooey to support Harpy Lady Sisters. But why, though? During the XC era, we got Harpy Chandler, which uh, was a great starter card that allowed you to make rank 4 or rank 7 Xyz because when there was a dragon on the field, presumably Harpy's pet dragon, she modulates her level to 7, meaning you have access to the rank 4 and rank 7 toolbox, which uh, is ridiculous. And the fact that they're winds and winged beast means you also get a couple extra spicy extra deck choices. Ice Beast, Zero Fine, and Lightning Chidori, which up until we got like Castell was probably one of the best rank fours we had, but it was landlocked to a win deck. So yeah, the deck had a lot going for it as a rank four slash seven spam deck. So you know what they need? How about a bunch of garbage for the Harpy Lady Sisters? Konami, what? Now I get that, you know, that was Mai's gimmick in the uh, in, in the anime, but uh, a monster that you, you can't summon except by the effect of an extremely specific spell card that is ultimately a 1950 beater that has nothing to do with the rest of the deck is bad. It's incredibly disrespectful. So trying to, you know, make Perfumer and Oracle and all the new cards work with her doesn't doesn't make any sense. So you know what? Let's roll with it. Yeah, because uh, uh, they're clearly not going to just make the deck focus rank 4, rank 7 ever again. Uh, so they're going to shoehorn Harpy Lady Sisters into it. But <laughs> watch this. I got you, fam. The first card coming up is Harpy Skirmisher. Yes, I knew the artwork is just a modified Cyber Harpy. But my, my buddy on the Discord, Braggerstrat, decided that he would do this for me really quick -sies, just so I had a visual aid for you guys. It was a fun thing he did for me, so thank you, buddy. Well, she's a level 4 uh, Wind Wing Beast, go figure, with 2,000 attack and 0 defense. Hmm, what do? Her name is also treated as Harpy Lady in the field and in the graveyard. Uh, because of course she is. This deck doesn't work if your harpy ladies aren't harpy ladies. Moving on. Once per turn, quick effect, you can discard one card to special summon this card to the field. Haha, <laughs> yes! She, uh, she can special summon herself on your opponent's turn when they are going first. Why would you want to do that? Because of her... Because it's one second. If she's special summoned by this way, you can add one harpy card from your deck to your hand. You're adding Feather Storm. Feather Storm is just absolutely fantastic. This hand trap is freaking busted. However, it requires you to control a harpy lady to really get the most mileage out of it. So it being a hand trap is kind of incidental if you can't use it when you are going second. So Skirmisher, she just... She don't care whose turn it is, she busts her ass onto the field, searches that trap card, and makes your opponent's life absolutely freaking miserable. Yes! But you can also use it during your turn as kind of like a starter extender job to either, you know, just get another body on board, get Harpist in the graveyard, as well as maybe searching your channeler or some one of your other starters, spoiler alert, in order to actually make you plays. So you're not necessarily just getting Featherstorm, but uh, she's versatile. Okay, so we fixed the first problem with Harpies. Uh, they have a fantastically stupid, almost absurdly broken trap card they don't use very well. What's the next problem? Well, they're, uh, uh, they only have one starter, and it's Chandler, and she's kind of not great because of her discard cost. So, and like, it's a specific discard cost, and if it gets ashed, that's a lot of advantage to lose. 
No, Valor. Yamate. As well as just, it just stops your turn. Feels bad, man. So that's why we got Harpy Shaman. Notice the fact that I used the Miss Valley Shaman artwork for this one. Slightly modified, that is. Because this this chick is clearly a harpy. Just wearing some crazy weird uh, gimp suit. God, it checks all my boxes. This is actually my buddy Kieran's suggestion on the Discord. I modified it just a little bit in order to kind of shove it into the theme that I'm trying to go with here. Valor no koto ga suku desu. But uh, overall, it's still his card, so thanks, buddy. She's a level 4 wind wing beast. Of course she is. With 0 attack and 1800 defense. So she's kind of a flip-flop of skirmisher. And of course, when she's in the field or graveyard, she's also treated as a harpy lady. During the turn this card was normal summoned, you can normal summon one harpy in addition to your regular normal summoner set. She's evil swarm caster for harpies. Sweet! The deck has plenty of main deck monsters. More often than not, you've probably opened another harpy. So she's not as awesome of a, of a starter as Chandler, but I'm trying to make these cards like they would actually be printed. Are you listening, Jerome? So if I make them two busted fantasy cards, they'll never make them, or they'll just never be like this. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be practical here. But she does have another effect. As an ignition, once per turn, you can target one card you control, destroy it, and if you do, return one card your opponent controls to the top of their deck. It doesn't target. It's so good. Okay, I might have gotten a little greedy with this one, but hear me out. It has to destroy one of your own cards, um, so the card advantage isn't great. The combo here uh, to any of the Harpy players is obviously to pop your own Hysteric Sign, which lets you add a like add your deck at the end of your turn to your hand uh, if it was killed. So yeah, that's that's the the wombo combo for you but it's a little awkward. So uh, it's great removal. It's certainly like, you know, Valor bait. But uh, the deck needs to be able to play into a board like any other tier one deck. So it needs to have something that's just, you know, the, the broken card. And you can only use its effects once per turn. Okay, cool. I'm so proud of this next one. We didn't even modify the card artwork because it just looks better as an XC monster. <laughs> Exalted Harpy Lady Sisters. D right? Though, like, that's the con that's the art from a continuous trap card. It's not even that good. It looks so much better as an XC. Be real. What do these rank four babes do? Notice her stat line is the same as Harpy Lady Sister. <laughs> and this is where I, uh, I, I'm i starting to mush in all that Perfumer, Oracle, Harpy Lady Sister, Garbo support we just got. Well, we didn't just get it. We got it like a year ago or whatever. But y you know what I mean. To mush it into the Rank 4, Rank 7 engine that actually functions. So you'd actually want to do that. She's made of three level 4 wind wing beast type monsters. Holy crap, is she not generic. The idea is that you overlay three Harpy Ladies to make her. Duh, it's Harpy Lady Sisters. It requires three Harpy Ladies. But I didn't say Harpy Ladies or Harpy cards or whatever in order to make it because I wanted to give you the option to run that, uh, what the hell is it? Where you banish a wind and you summon it. Uh, not the fairy, but the wing beast version. It's like Garuda or something, oh, whatever. You know what I mean? Just so you have an option of playing something else in order to help you extend your plays out because you might need it still. I haven't play tested any of these. However, you may also exceed some in this thing by using a face up monster whose name was originally Harpy Lady Sisters. So, ah, see, that, that, there it is, there it is. If you made Harpy Lady Sisters before you did this thing, you can just slap this thing down on it. And her name is treated as Harpy Lady Sisters while on the field or in the graveyard. Basically, it's just uh, a nice shiny upgrade armor for your Harpy Lady Sisters. It turns her into an effect monster. Yes! It's so, it works! It just works. But that's not all she does. Like I said, we're, we need to make her an effect monster now. If one of her materials was a Harpy card, uh, she cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. Meaning, uh, if you use this in the deck it's intended, she gets a bit of armor. I didn't want to make her unaffected by everything because this isn't supposed to be a stupid dream card that's overpowered and dumb and impractical. Destroyed by battle and card effects is, you know, okay. There's plenty of ways of still getting around that. Cool. Next. Warrants per turn, quick effect. You can detach one material from this card, target one card your opponent controls, return that card to the hand, and if you do, you can set one hysteric spell or trap from your deck to the field. <laughs> ah, we're giving them several different types of removal. Not all on the same monster, but sprinkled through the archetype in order to give it some toolboxy problem solving. 
And also you can start to see that uh, the idea of these cards is to like rotate your advantage. It's not necessarily plussing, it's like getting rid of something on your field for something else that you want that's in your deck. So instead of fixing your hand, you're you're, you're fixing your, your, your field. You can only use your effect once per turn. So with this card, you are setting your Hysteric Party or your Hysteric Sign, because both those cards are really, really good, but unsearchable and stupid. Granted, having your boss monster search sign, which is supposed to fix your hand so you can actually then make your boss monster is a bit, you know, catch 22, but again, we're trying to be practical, actual Yu-Gi-Oh cards here, not just make a wish foundation Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And it's very much like Konami to make a weird, Catch-22 card that does something the deck wants, but only when the deck's already winning. <laughs> well, how about that, uh, how about that, like, rank 7, though, that this deck can do? Harpy's Pet Wyvern! Yes! Rank 7, Wind, Worm? Hmm. With Harpy's Pet Dragon stats. It's a worm, so that, um, once you summon it, if you play another Chandler, she doesn't turn into a 7 anymore. It was strategic, actually. Two level 7 Harpy monsters. It's not generic. I'm not, I'm... No, Dragon Rulers, don't! Harpy cards on the field cannot be destroyed by card effects. I know this is a bit redundant if you had this and the uh, the other Ixie on board because, like, she has her own protection. However, nothing is as stupid as popping your own Harpy's hunting ground with its own effect because your opponent is just a jerk who doesn't play back row. So this lets you just do that without popping your hunting ground. I, I hate that so much. Plus it rewards you for playing the giant garnet that is Harpy's Pet Dragon <laughs> by giving you some blanket protection for the rest of your board. Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card to activate one of the following effects. Select a face-up Harpy monster and double its attack. Yeah, uh, Harpies don't really have a great power ceiling. Plus it combos with the existing XC monster, Harpy's Pet Phantasmal Dragon, for a nice big number right to the face. Or you can return one Harpy card on the field or in the graveyard to the hand to banish one card your opponent controls. It doesn't target! It's not busted, because it's an ignition, but it's just really nice problem-solving removal. Would you play this over Big Eye or Draco Sack? I don't know, but it's certainly an option for you. And you can only use its, its effect once per turn, so you gotta pick one or the other. Uh, it's just one of those four funzy boss monsters, so, you know, cool. But nah, here's the piece de resistance. You thought I was just gonna give you a bunch of monsters. Nah, fam. Remember that XC monster I gave you that sets hysteric speller traps? Ha! <laughs> uh, here comes the game winner. Hysteric Mirror Wall. It's a, it's a My Valentine reference, because she plays Mirror Wall. Hysteric Mirror Wall can be searched and set directly from the deck. Oh, it's almost like Salamangrates or something. It's even a counter trap. I'll give you one guess what it is. It's, it's an Infernity Barrier. When your opponent activates a spell, trap, or monster effect, while you control a face-up harpy monster, discard one card, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. So, um, the discard is a little wonky. Obviously, the, the idea is that you're discarding, like, your harpist to help mitigate the cost of this. I didn't want it to be stupidly broken. You set it from the deck. You build your board, you make your exalted harpy lady sisters, you set this thing, or you set party, depending on how you feel like your opponent's next turn's gonna be. But I don't want it to be stupidly busted. I want it to be fair. <laughs> well, kind of, because it's it's not done. Because then, after you negate the activation, you can special summon one Harpy monster from your deck to the field in face-up defense position. Helps mitigate the discard cost. Again, you're rotating your advantage. You're cycling your field. So constantly, your Harpies are swooping in and swooping out. God, this is such a cool playstyle. It's swarmy and control. I won't play it! I won't play it! And this card fixes the last problem that Harpies have. They can break a board, but they really can't make one. Uh, most of their monsters don't really do anything. Uh, even in the rank 4 or rank 7 pool, they just kind of sit there. So, like, if Featherstorm doesn't just win you the game, you, you pretty much lost. So, it's nice having a nice uh, Harpy barrier in the background just for one extra level of protection. But anyway guys, that was my, uh, that was my harpy support. God, I'm so good at this. Drum, if you're watching, I can send you a resume. <laughs> so let me know in the comments below what you guys think of the cards and, um, hmm. I, I, I know it's cheesy to put light goals on a video, but like, I'm curious to see if it works. This thing gets like, I don't know, I don't know, 500. 
500 likes within like, I don't know, a week. The next video that's like not News Geo, which I think the next video, I think the next next video is gonna be News Geo, given the time of the month, but the next non News Geo video will be another one of these. And also, uh, in the comments, uh, let me know what archetype you'd like me to fix. If I have any knowledge of it whatsoever, I will do my best. Don't say Venoms. I don't, I don't think it's possible. Anyway, guys, <laughs> if you don't troll the matter who will, I'll see you guys next time. Oh, hey losers, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Wanna watch something else? Hurry up and choose one of these. Ugh. When are you gonna make a choice? This year would be nice.